Welcome back to our NBL Now roundtable editions during the FIBA break. We're working our way through each team, the things that we like, the things that need to improve, and what does it all look like at season's end? I'm Jack Heverin alongside Damon Lowry and Derek Rucker. I'll do my best to keep these two apart. We're talking about the Cairns Taipans today. They're four and six on the season. They sit just outside the play-in. And to quote a Coldplay song, it's been the adventure of a lifetime so far. We've seen the good, the bad, and somewhere in between. Well, that adventure to the United States can be somewhat disruptive, and I don't think they've handled it well at all, Damon. Um, it was it was great that obviously they get to go over there and play in those games. I mean, they got smashed, so it probably didn't do a lot for their confidence. Mm-hmm. But the number one thing with this team is they can't get the full complement of players out there. Somebody's always hurt. I don't know what they need to do out there. We know they play high energy. Adam Ford loves intensity. Maybe they need to chill out a little bit of practice just so we can get more bodies ready when we flick the lights on because ultimately that's when it matters. Going to have to agree with you. Them tropics, they ain't all, it's not all what it's cracked up to be. That, that NBA trip, we got to scrap this. Now, Real, come on, that's I'm crazy. scrapping it. And you can't scrap it. What, what am I getting out of it? I'm, I'm jeopardizing my own NBL season. I'm compromised because I'm over here losing by 80 to, to the Toronto Raptors or whoever they played over there. That was an outlier. So I mean, I'm, play, I'm not even playing with my full team over there. So, yet the team, the roster just can't get right. It can't get right. They all can't be on the same page, same health. There's always something. I, and, you know what, too? I need to see Tajir and Clintman and some of those guys, those top-notch guys, when you got a little injury, stop sitting out the whole game. Give me, as, give me as much as you have in this game. I don't care if it's 12 minutes. I don't care if it's seven minutes. Hey, you know what? Once we flick the lights on, you might feel good and be able to play 25. Stop ruling yourself out. Medical staff, give more leniency to the athletes to make their own decisions about whether or not they can play. New segment, medical staff, you're in the way. You're doing way <laughs> too much. You got too many opinions. Hip hurt, sit out. Ankle hurt, sit out. Like you said, play our era, we play. It didn't matter what. And you know what else they're doing? They're playing with two imports. Josh Roberts, can't find him. I don't even know if he's still in Queensland. You can't win in this league with two imports, unless you're the Melbourne United. Let me come back to that in just a a few seconds. Let's talk about their grade, first and foremost, before we get to the big three. How have we graded their season so far? I've got them in a solid C, going down. Going down. Sliding C. Sliding C. Um, I keep it at a C based on their potential and the fact that as we discussed, they haven't had a lot of pieces consistently. So I'm going to leave them there. They're not too far out of the hunt. It's not like they've been a mess and all over the place. They've had some disappointing losses, but they haven't been catastrophic. The game the other night, they played a really good Tasmania team, tough. They lost on the buzzer. It's not alarm bells, but I still thought they were going to be better than this. So see. And I, they got C talent. They probably got B talent. B talent. But mm. I'm giving them a D plus. A D plus because at the end of the day, it's results driven. Like, I'm giving you one more grade before I call you out for lack of integrity with your grading system. <laughs> one more team. You a classmate, not the principal, not the teacher. <laughs> your classmate. <laughs> now, if you can just do all those little things and put all those intangibles together, because at the end of the day, I'm looking direct four and six. Four and six is four. Numbers don't lie. Now, yes, you got the ability and the talent to be six and four, but guess you're not. So I don't know what to tell you. You got to get everybody on the same page. And for that reason, D plus. Okay, so with that being said, as we get into the big three, the seventh on the table at the fever break, is that about right? Are they about the seventh best team in the competition right now? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them that in that mix. Like they're not as good, I don't think, as Tasmania when you start when you start talking about a deep playoff run, but yet they took Tasmania right down to the wire and probably a game that they should have won. Um, I think they're athletically and physically, I think they're superior to Brisbane, but Brisbane might just have a bit more grunt. Um, So it's really tough to to differentiate between some of those teams in the middle. Are they better than Southeast Melbourne? It's really murky in there. But, you know, I think they're probably right where they should be. But, Damon, I think there's there's a serious potential like where that team could run all five in a row and maybe not lose again when you go up the cans. You know, there's always that possibility. I believe that they got strong leadership. 
Like 40 is a barroom brawler. They're mm -hmm. not going to lay down for nobody. They just need their troops. They, if they can all just stay healthy. And Taron Armstrong, uh, you know, it's like he's kind of throwing the deep end a little bit. You're giving him Josh Giddy comparisons already. Like, just well, there are some down. similarities. Like May what? Well, maybe if you cleared your lenses and stopped looking Tall? at it from a biased perspective, because I can see already for some reason you don't like him. <laughs> so just eliminate <laughs> all of that. I can tell. Eliminate all of that. Go back, objectively watch the game, and analyze what he does. And I think you'll see that there are some giddyisms out there. The passing, whack, whack. He's tall. He can throw from all different angles. But yet, we need to see some winning basketball out of him. Need so, some leadership. Yeah. What have you got against Taron Armstrong? Nothing. Hey, hey <laughs> Ben Armstrong, my man. He's played against yeah. him back in NBL one days. You don't know much about that NBL one stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's, that's what we used to do before we made it to the show. But nah, he's got upside. I give him that. But like Josh Giddy, come on, man. Right. I think he's watched an NBA one game before. That's, that's about as close as it gets. Let's go back to Josh Roberts then as part of the big three. Mm. We've got an import that's playing six minutes a game. What, what's happening here? He has done something to upset the Ford universe. Because I don't know what they brought him out here to do. Maybe be kind of a role play. Every import doesn't have to be a 20 and 10 guy. You yes. need your role playing imports as well. I thought he at least could have been like a Jacob Wiley, at mm. least. But we don't even see him on the floor. So that, that, that just tells me that you're doing something in training that is rubbed for the wrong way. And going back to that NBA debacle junket that we're going to scrap, he was actually their best player probably in that, in that whole mix. He was rebounding real well against those G League teams. But now, for whatever reason, it's not translating. So you're playing with two imports, and it's not enough. Just got a test message from Larry. He said, can we cut Damon's mic? <laughs> uh, I don't have control over that, but nevertheless. Uh, Larry does. <laughs> yeah. Look, one of the problems with Josh Roberts and getting on the court is that they've got Menenga. They've got Wardenberg. They've got Clintman. They've got guys in his Gak. position. They've got Gak. And all those, well, three of those guys could be there for the long haul. And Menenga and Wardenberg are going to be two very valuable pieces, just as we talked about with Josh Bannon in the bullet segment. And it's a balance now versus longevity. So, you know, I understand it because if you look at Josh Roberts' metrics, they're outstanding. He does a great time productivity-wise when he's on the floor. But at what cost? Because we know what Forty's probably thinking. You know, I've got to play these young guys, otherwise they'll bounce. Now, the crate, the paradox is if you play Menenga and Warrenberg and they get good, they're bouncing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's a hard one. As is their best lineup. So this is question three of the big three. And a lot of this is because of injury and it's been out of Adam Ford's control. What is their best lineup right now? Because we've seen a bit of everything. Well, Pat Miller, the, the linebacker playing point guard in Cairns. Bull Quall, Bobby Clintman, Sam Wardenberg. Oh, what? Who's your fifth? Man, you can almost put anybody out there. Oh, you're just going to, I mean, Tajir McCall. Tajir McCall, of course. Okay. No, no, no. no I, I, I had a slight... That's understandable. Paul. Now, Taj, I, I love Taj with the way he's playing. They can so versatile. They can line up a team that everybody, you take Pat Miller off and put, say, a Coda Gak out there on the floor, they massive. Um, so yeah. they line up. There's no wrong answers in that lineup. Rock? So a Coda Gak has one of the best net ratings in the league. So I've got to have him out there. Okay, then I'm going with Tajir McCall. I'm going with Patrick Miller. I'm going with Bull Qual. And then I'm going with Sam Wardenberg. And I don't think Clintman isn't, and especially if you're talking about crunch time play in game, do or die game. Who's the five that I want out there on the floor that's going to get it done? And that's a significant compliment to Gak based on where he's been the past two or three mm -hmm. years. He was picking splinters down at Illawarra, could not get any burn. So Adam Ford has done a great job in developing him. But I think that's my five. To the plus, the thing that you've liked from the season so far, what's their biggest plus, Damon? Uh, Ken Taipan is going to be in the association next season. Bobby Clipman, get around him now because you ain't going to see him next year. The dude is gone first round. I love everything about his game. I love his demeanor, his yeah. poise. Six foot ten, can stroke it, 
can get on the rim. He's a high athlete. Like his athleticism is off the charts. So that's the like when was the last time a Kansas Typer hadn't been in the NBA? Well, if you want to go Aaron Grabo, you probably should have made it, but you didn't. But well, a couple a team removed Tory Craig. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Good call. Tory Craig, who has done pretty well in form in forming a nice long, lengthy but, uh, NBA career. But direct point. direct from the Taipans to the league. Don't think it's happened. I believe that, uh, yeah, I mean, we've had the EuroLeague transition, but in terms of uh, straight to the league, I don't think it's happened. Um, I love their energy, though. I love I love the Taipans energy, and that's what they're about. When you walk in the building and do a game up there, you feel it. You feel the heat. You feel the bright lights. And now they've got a new floor, which they haven't christened yet with a W, have they? No, sir. Mm. Not yet. Not at this stage. The minus. What's been their biggest minus of the season? I think right now, decision making. And this is something that's plagued them. And the way they like to play, much like the Sydney Kings, up tempo, fast, up the floor defense, push the ball at all costs. That's great when you're making shots. When the shots don't go in as much as you like them to, that's when the decision making and the discretion, that's when that becomes more important. And right now, they're not shooting the ball as well as I'm sure Ford would like them to. So they need to lift that, the decision-making on the run, and I think they'll be much better off. I had summertime humidity because it's coming. You know, it's coming up there. It's bad to play in. But inconsistency <laughs> with the roster. Like we said earlier, like I can't get over that because if you can – if I'm Adam Ford, I go to sleep every night. I'm tossing and turning. Who's going to be available? Who can I trust to be fit, healthy, in the country – so yeah, leaning over, checking your phone in the middle of the night, hoping the doctor hasn't hit you up. <laughs> What's going on now? You know what I mean? Well, the can stuff is going to hit Diamond off yeah. after this, isn't it? How'd the doctor get my number? Stop texting me in the middle of the night. Yeah, the, the roster, the guys just can't show up on a consistent basis. So for me, that's the negative. And where does it finish at the end of the season? Are they making the play-in? Are they making the playoffs or are they not? I heard Greece is a good time this time of year. Nice little trip to Greece, maybe. I can't, I don't have a Have you seen the islands in Cairns? Perhaps if you got out of Victoria every now and then, you can see there's some fabulous places to holiday around the country. There's the Dane Tree. There's Port Douglas. There's a beautiful reef. And then risk my life with the jellyfish and the Taipan snakes. <laughs> I'm trying to live to next. I'm trying to live to NBL 25. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm so, look, with everybody on board, it could easily made the play in. But for that reason, it's a 28 game season. It's not enough games. Yeah. So, like, we don't have that margin for error too small. So, I got to missing out. Well, I think based on extrapolating all your other results, I think we're going to be the same here. I've got them finishing seventh, and I think that's probably where they're going to slot in the Dame uh, com computer system as well. I think it's going to be seven and seven, and they just miss out. However, they have some big games coming up against Brisbane. Mm. I think they've got one in Cairns and one in Brisbane. And I think those games will go a long way to deciding those two positions. They're very much a watch this space, I think, the Cairns mm. Taipans. We'll see what it looks like on the other side of the fever break. Shout out to the jellyfish and the Taipans as well. Thanks for being with us on NBL Now. We'll catch you next time.